Between November's last day and December's first is a shifting matter. On the Vendée Globe, at this time of the race, there's a real shift between Armé Le Cléache, leader since November 16th, and Jean-Pierre Dic, who took over his throne. Transition stories coupled with meters going crazy upon entering the roaring 40s. On November 30th, the 468 miles within 24 hours record held by Alex Thompson in 2003 is erased from the tablets. A first time by François Gabard with 482 miles, then a second time by Jean-Pierre Dic with 498 miles. And a third time on the very same day as Jean-Pierre Dic passes the symbolic 500 miles line. 502 miles or 930 kilometers swallowed in one day propelled by the wind only. A kind of dream that involves hard work. I mostly move around on my knees as I can't stand up in the boat. But listen, I have a good mattress. I try to stay warm in my sleeping bag, think of other things and sleep a little. True, when I stand up, it's a bit of a war game, a life of a... I compare that to a hermit in a grotto sometimes. Especially the sounds are very loud. To say the pace is up is obvious to say the least. Forward, of course, with five boats within 100 miles. And right behind, where Jean Lecam, Dominique Vavre and Mike Golding want to remain in the same weather system. Mike Golding, whose route crossed the Tristan da Cunha Island, Her Gracious Majesty's isolated property. 200 population, 250 uh, people, and only seven surnames. It looks amazing. Tanguy de la Motte is far from the lead, but rather near the skies. At the head of his mast, he takes advantage of light weather conditions to check the equipment before entering the Great South. There we go. I'm at the second spreader. It's nice. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. Yeah, that's good. No chaffing. This is great. Nice check before the roaring 40s. Really cool. During that time, 1,300 miles southeast, the group ahead plays a regatta that reminds us of a musical chairs game. Three different leaders within 24 hours, 15 miles apart. And a rookie, François Gabard, who doesn't let himself be impressed by the more experienced at the Around the World exercise. Well, it's moving on board Massif, reaching starboard, right behind the front. We've been racing along for the last three days. We were ahead earlier on, now we're right behind. It's slowed down so we can't go any faster with this sea. We're at about the same speed. This morning we were ahead, not by much. Can't write home about it, but it's always nice to be at the top of the ranking. That's it. Happy to be ahead. So it says a leader, François Gabard, passed the Aiguise Gate, first of the nine security gates set at regular intervals in the Great South. Delimited by GPS markings, these gates, shown in green, must be taken into account by the competitors. They are meant to reasonably keep them away of the Antarctic continent and by extension of the icebergs and growlers that drift under these latitudes. A reality that somehow chills and worries us. But in this morning of December 2nd, our main worry is for Jean Lecam, whose boat is at full stop. Hello Jean, here's the race headquarters, how are you? Not too well. I've got a net stuck in my keel. Oh, shit. We'll leave you to it then, huh? Yeah. Good luck. Come on, come on. How can I do that? How can I do it? Imagine the setting. You're in the middle of the South Atlantic, thousands of miles from the nearest land, and you're going to have to dive under your boat for 30 minutes in water that's at 12 degrees where the ocean's depth is measured in kilometers. And you have no choice because you have to cut a net that wound around your keel, which keeps you from sailing on. Impossible is not Le Cam. I got the net, I got it. Done. I can tell you that I'm really happy. Cause that's it. Feels good. You can't imagine. Damn it. I was there with my knife. And at first I grabbed the whole net and it wasn't cutting. It wasn't cutting. I couldn't see what was being cut. I started freaking out, really freaking. Well then, I had to cut bit by bit, one by one. There are moments in the Vendée Globe that are really extraordinary. These belong to that category. 
you can't imagine. Here now, I'm letting go. Because it's a moment. A moment. I'm really glad to be here. Gosh, I'll tell you. It's... During a Vendée Globe, there are unexpected moments like those that forever count for a skipper. And for others, there are precise days where one must deal with the distance to their relatives. Today's the 3rd of December, and it's my son's birthday. Two years old today. Happy birthday, Edgar. Happy birthday. We passed the first Eglise gate, and we're heading towards the Cape of Good Hope. We should cross later today. Even at a distance, Ahmed made a point of giving Edgar several presents, among which taking over the lead of the Vendée Globe and be the first to pass the Cape of Good Hope longitude, and Cherry to top the boat in 22 days, 23 hours, improving by over 24 hours the record held by Vincent Rioux in 2004. Great sounds. 24 by 24, that's what we hear. Howls, waves, a very particular atmosphere. Among the competitors, the time has come to switch oceans. Here, the Indian Ocean, in all its splendor, we're right behind the front, just jibing. I'm quite happy with the jibing's timing. It's not that strong, about 30 knots. François Gabard, inescapable member of the leading trio, chased by a fourth chap who could, considering the mileage he's making up daily, make it become a quartet, Bernard Stamm. I don't know the precise reason, but I think it's thanks to the wind I've caught up. In any case, I know that if the sea would let us do what we wish, we'd go much faster, that's sure. Behind, gaps are widening. Between Mike Golding, 6th, and Alexandro Di Benedetto, closing the trail, the fleet is spread over 1,800 miles of 3,300 kilometers. It's tea time on board Team Plastique. Tea time. To each their own rhythm, their own race, their own Vendée Globe. So here, behind me, Inaccessible Island. The Inaccessible Island. I'm almost there, but not quite yet. She wears her name well. It's the first land I see since the Portugal coasts. It's nice. It's pretty here. A wind that's not very strong, 25, 35 knots. The boat is quite happy with itself. Nice slides, good speeds, sensations, and great surfing treats. And to each their own problems. I'm a little late because of problems on the mainsail. I had to fix things up yesterday. Three battens that were broken and a few things that weren't in ideal condition to sail the Great South. Twenty-fourth day into the race for those in the lead, the game is to head towards the second Iguiz gate as quickly as possible for a reason Armel Leclerc doesn't miss to evoke. There, we're trying to speed up to avoid the anti-cyclone behind us not to be caught up by it. We have the Crozet gate before us, and the objective is to pass the gate before the anti-cyclone. So we tally, half the sheet. See you. At almost one fourth of the way, the eight competitors who belt along in the Indian Ocean are seriously shaken by a rolling and tossing sea. When we speed up, we hit the waves. The boat's nose digs into the waves. It's very loud and uncomfortable and very damp as well. The anti-cyclone of which Armel Leclerc was talking about forces his opponents to turn off towards south. The advantage, they can sail with a better angle to the wind to go faster. Disadvantage, they may encounter ice. The icebergs are for tonight, maybe. Well, icebergs can be located. We have the data, so it's really if we're in a dangerous zone and we know they're there. Of course, we won't sleep. There are the icebergs and many more trees sailing the Great South. Living conditions are preposterous. Not a dry place on board. Nothing's dry. 
all soaking wet. That's it. And it's mighty cold. So you gotta breathe, sleep, eat, and on top of that, go faster than the comrades. All that is what makes me say it's tough. A few hundred miles behind, positioned south, the trio Golding Vavre Le Cam rubs elbows in a regatta as intensely as at the lead. Here's a sea that's horrible, terrible, a tragedy. And then, on a beautiful morning in the Indian Ocean at more than 13,000 kilometers from the Sable d'Olonne. And here, here, here's Mirabeau. Here's our friend Jean de Cam, right behind, not far. I don't know if this kind of thing will happen again. To see each other in the middle of the ocean? In any case, it's really nice to be doing it. At two boats length. It's fabulous. It's wonderful. At the lead since the Cape of Good Hope, Armé Le Cliache is the first to have passed the second of the ice gates. These key points that we realize by separate strategies. Caught up by the famous anti-cyclone, he lost his leadership to François Gabard first, then to Bernard Stamm. But based on his positioning, the Banque Populaire skipper could very well soon get it back. I salute the Vendée Globe skippers.